Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing us in with your brother this week. Now, family, I'm going to tell you all straight up, I'm telling you all straight up right now, right out the gate. Tonight, I'm going to do everything that I possibly can to try to make this as family friendly as possible. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out. And the reason why I say that is because I know that there are so many of you who have children and, you know, you have family members that you're trying to bring into the truth. And quite frankly, you're just a little uncomfortable doing it. So I'm going to do whatever I can here tonight to try to make it a little bit more comfortable. You know, I know that there's people out there that are not used to the way that I talk, but I'm going to try my best to behave myself tonight. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna promise anything. I'm, just, I'm gonna try, okay? But it is for a bigger purpose. You see, family, right now, the world is in complete disarray. Whether you see it or not, it is. Because last week, or I would even say about maybe two weeks ago, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, came out and told the world what many of us already knew, that black people, Hispanic people, and Native American people are the biblical Israelites. Now, that is no new information for many people. But for many people, it is brand new information. So what's happening right now? What's happening right now is that you have a lot of black people, and I'm, I'm specifically speaking about the tribe of Judah, that are beside themselves, that this white boy came out and said that we are the Israelites. Okay? So that's happening on earth right now, too. I'm not even talking about the people that did not know. I'm talking about within Israel. That even within Israel, you have our people that are not warning the rest of the masses within Israel. They're excited that their master said that they're the Israelites. You see, that's just stupid. There are many camps that's doing that right now too, okay? I don't understand that, and guess what? I really don't care. But when it comes to this family, being that we know that information, it is now time to, talk, to, to start talking about strategy. And we have to. Because things are getting ready to start to go down. And when I say go down, I'm talking about the earth. <laughs> the earth and many nations are about to fall. They're about to come crumbling down. But as that happens or before it happens, there was this thing that the father spoke about and it's called Jacob's trouble. You see, while everybody out there is pissing off the roof, because Vladimir Putin said that we are the Israelites. They're not realizing what he did and what he said. He just sound the alarms. It's time for Jacob's trouble. And now that it is time for Jacob's trouble, I want to make sure that you are equipped. Okay? So tonight, I am really talking to the kings and the princes because it is time for you to get up. It is time for your lackadaisical ways of life to end tonight. It's over. It's over. It is time for you to do the things that the father created you to do. And that is to be a man, to stand up and take charge. Your families, your wives, your children. It is time for you to instruct your sons what to do. And if they don't want to listen, then guess what? It means that you're going to die, child. That's what it means. That means for many of you. That means for me. That means for all of you. If we don't do what the Father tells us, it is death to us. And we can't keep playing around with that. I'm not playing any games. There are conversations that we are no longer having. We're not having mediocre conversations because we are not at the stem of mediocrity. Right now, we are at... The zenith, we are at the pinnacle of the existence of earth that's about to end. So family, with that said, we have to have 
a history lesson because many of you have no idea who Jacob is. So that's what we're going to do. So family, please open your Bibles to the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. And I want you to go to Genesis chapter 25. The book of uh, Genesis chapter 25, go down to first. You know what? Let's start at. Let's start at verse 22. I want to start there. I want to start with that struggle. Watch this. Genesis chapter 25, verse 22. And the children struggled together within her, talking about Rebecca. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So our grandmother, her name is Rebecca. And Rebecca went to the Most High because she was pregnant with twins. And she's like, I don't understand what's going on in my stomach. Father, what is happening in here? This is not normal. I haven't seen any other pregnancy like this before. What's going on, Father? What's going on inside my stomach? Watch this. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. You have two different nations. Two different types of people are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. So now the father is giving the characteristics about what's going on in her stomach. She said, there's a war going on in your stomach from two different type of nations. Two different types of nations. And one of these nations is not only going to be younger, but it's going to be younger and stronger than the older one. Big brother, little brother, when it comes to twins. Now watch this. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her, in her womb. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Now those are the Caucasians. Those are white people. That's what happens when their babies are born. They're born red. Why? Because they lack melanin. They don't have melanin. And we're going to talk about that, if not tonight, in another lesson, why they don't have. You know what? No, no, let's just talk about it right now. Let's, you know why they don't have any melanin? Because when the end comes, that sky is going to crack. And there's going to be a fervent heat that is coming from that sky. And those of us that are melanated, we are able to deal with the heat. And those of us that are not will be eviscerated. They won't be able to, they will not be able to stand the heat. They're going to melt. That's why the father said there's going to be so much blood. There's going to be rivers and rivers and rivers and rivers and rivers of blood. <laughs> that day is coming soon. Mm -hmm. It most certainly is. And if you got a problem with that, then that's just your damn problem. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with him. He's doing the killing. Not, well, some of us will be. <laughs> but through the order of him. And after that, verse 26, and after that came his brother out and took hold of Esau's hill. Like, nigga, where you going? And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. So he had him by the foot, the younger brother. And that younger brother, his name is Jacob. He's younger and stronger than his older brother Esau. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with that, Esau are white people. Jacob are black people. The Negroes specifically, not the Africans, not Africans, because we're not Africans. We are Hebrews. We're not Africans. And now the world, the world knows that now because they're doing their research. They're doing their own independent research to try their best to debunk what's happening. And the more and more they try to debunk it, the more and more they're finding out how true it is. That's the problem on earth right now. You see, there's a major, major issue on earth. We're going to get into it, okay? But that was that. We're doing a history lesson. So now with that being said, family, you know where Jacob is. You know who it is. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jacob is our grandfather. We all come from his bulls. You understand that? Why? Because this is hereditary. This is about a brethren, a bloodline. And that man, Jacob, I don't want to go ahead of myself. Hold on, stop. I'm not going ahead of myself. Yep, we're going to continue with this. I want you to stay in the same book of Genesis, but I want you to go to Genesis chapter 32. And let's go down to verse 24. The book of Genesis chapter 32, let's go down to verse 24. I'm going to read this down. So now 
we got to find out what was so special about Jacob. What was so special about our grandfather that it bled through him and into us? You got to see. Watch. This is our history. This is what Christianity never wanted us to know because they were paid to never tell us. Watch. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Now, I got to stop because we got to give this little context. Now, first and foremost, Jacob, our grandfather, our grandfather was fighting with an angel. He fought with him all night. As you see what it says until the daybreak, until the daybreak. I need you all to understand something for many of us that have been in fights before. 30 seconds into a fight, we're winded for those of us that are not in the best conditions, right? Even some of us that are in the greatest conditions, when we sit, we fighting like that, whew, the first 30 seconds to a minute. Can you imagine fighting for five minutes straight without no breaks, without no bell ringing? Hmm. No water, no nothing. He fought that angel, an angel. He fought a heavenly being. We're not talking about a regular human. Our grandfather fought an angel all night long. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We, we going there tonight, baby. Yes, we are. Watch. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob, Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Stop now. So many people passed by that. He was wrestling with him all night, so much that the angel was like, all right, stop. And our grandfather was like, nope. He was like, son, chill. Our grandfather was like, nope. So what did he have to do? He had to knock his thigh bone out of place. He was like, okay, pow. Just touch the thigh bone. Knocked it out of place. Going to show you how strong an angel truly, truly is. To where all he did was touch him and knocked his damn thigh bone out of place. And yet our grandfather, our grandfather, our grandfather, ours, 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 our grandfather wrestled that nigga all night. There's something special about the Israelites. There's something about the Israelites that's special. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby, baby, watch this. Watch this. And he said, let me go for the day breaking. The angel was like, come on now, get off. Get off me. Let me go. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. <laughs> that's nigga shit all day long. Oh, I forgot. It's supposed to be family friendly. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> That's black people stuff All day long Or should I say all night long in this matter Because Jacob was like Yo I'm not leaving until you bless me In other words That's what black people said Nigga I ain't leaving until I'm leaving with something I'm leaving with something tonight <laughs> Oh yes watch this And he said I will not let thee go Except thou bless me And he said unto him What is thy name and he said Jacob and he said thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel let me stop for a second family because as we know all throughout these scriptures the father when he is proud of something he changes the name on it <laughs> as we learned not that long ago in regards to Peter and Rock remember that Yep. Here we go. Let's continue. I'm going to start this again. What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men. He made him a ruler of the world. He made him a ruler of the world. He made him a ruler of the world. Just like he did Adam. People are not realizing that's what this is. This is the handing of Adam down to Jacob. Why? I'm going to read it again. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men. Did not the father put Adam in charge of all things? Didn't he? Didn't he? It was always destined for you. That's why when I sit here and I talk about all of us, we were there in the beginning. This was always ours. 
always. But we kept breaking the commandments of the Most High. The Most High is like, well, I forget all this. I'm taking it back. Nah, y'all niggas don't listen. You don't listen. You're disrespectful and disobedient. So I'm taking it back because y'all niggas don't listen. Watch. Let's continue. All right, I'm sorry right here. I want to pick it back up. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. That's where that whole Peniel gland come from. That's where you have people like that third eye or whatnot. That's where that that's where this is coming from. It's that's that pineal gland being able to see God face to face. I think the most high was telling the truth. What do you think? <laughs> because remember, Adam saw the most high face to face. Jacob saw the most high face to face. Our grandfather saw his face. So guess what that means? You're able to see it too. Do you understand now why the father said, I am turning my back. I'm turning my back to y'all. Do you get it? Do you understand why? He said, because for one, you keep disrespecting me. I don't want you looking in my face. About face, nigga. About face. Do y'all get it? The importance of being able to see God's face. Christianity is not going to teach you this, family. They're not allowed. They're not allowed to show you these things in this book. They're not. And they don't want none either. They don't. They don't want none of any Israelite, even though they're Israelite themselves. They don't want any. They don't. They don't. They don't because they know that they cannot battle us in this book. They know it. It's their problem, though. Now, let's continue to talk about Jacob's trouble. Let's get some of this here now. Family, I want you to go to the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 11. The book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 11. Watch this. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. I'm bringing this out here for, for a reason. I need y'all to understand the Most High has an army. The Most High has an army. The Most High has an army. He's ready to fight, family. This is about war. This is about death. This is about killing. And there's a whole bunch of it that's getting ready to come. I'm going to start that again. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide it and who can abide it family that is a promise first and foremost god has an army for those of you who are unfamiliar god has an army they're called angels and those angels are led by yahweh who the world calls jesus christ and on the day that great and terrible day that's coming that day that's coming, that army is going to be revealed to the entire world, to the entire planet, because what you know as the sky is going to crack open and we will be able to see into the virtue. We will be able to see into that godly dimension because that veil is going to be pulled back. And we're going to see it all. There's going to be people that crap their pants. They're going to crap their pants. As it says in the scriptures, they're not going to be able to hold their bowels. I'm not sure about you, but that's a hell of a warning. Now, being that I read that and being that we talked about this time, I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7, please. The book of Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. I need you to see this. I need you to see this. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. Alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Y'all understand that? There is a time that is coming <laughs> that the father said, these Edomites and everybody else on this planet, 
These niggas are gonna go crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Crazy. Do you know why they're gonna go crazy? Because there's going to be this lie that has been told all over this planet. There's this religion called Christianity that was going to creep its way into every religion and completely just take over and dominate that religion. So much that it is going to become the religion of the world. So much that that same religion even incorporates Islam into it. And it's all going to become one whole nation. A nation of religions. A new world order as they call it. But the real new world order is going to be when we take over the world, the righteous Israelites. And that is the part where you should be concerned about because that is why the time of Jacob's trouble is going to come. Because they don't want that. They fear it. Do you know this upcoming Monday, April 8th, which just happens to be our new year, Y'all understand that? There is an eclipse that is taking place on this new year. Now, I want to make this clear to everyone that's in earshot of what I'm saying. A couple of months ago, right when the new year is getting ready to begin, I did a video and I put it on YouTube and I also put it on uh, Instagram showing everybody that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to looking at and being able to decipher when the new year is. You see, there's so many camps out there right now that have these dates wrong. <laughs> All I'm saying is that the date that I said, a heavenly, a heavenly event is taking place on that day. There's a lot of people that will sit around and, you know, They'll big themselves up and stuff like that. I just have to remind y'all every once in a while that I know what I'm talking about. And all you have to do is go back and look. Go back and watch it. I said it on that particular day. It is April 8th. And here comes the eclipse on April 8th. From the time frame that I said it was going to happen, which was March 25th, which was the full moon. You see, I'm not, I can't play with you. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to play with any of you and the camps that y'all follow. I don't got time for that nonsense with them niggas having a wrong date because they are not who they claim to be. This is all about evidence now. No more playing. And I'm sick and tired of talking to stupid ass people. I'm not doing it anymore. Forget it. It's either you listen, open your ears and listen, or you're going to die. People, I'm sick and tired of sending out warnings. Either listen or die. You choose. Make up your mind. It's not about me. Make up your mind, all right? So now that was that. Go down to verse 10. Go down to verse 10, all right? Watch this. I want to read this. Therefore, fear Thou not, O servant, or excuse me, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. No police following after us. No detectives, none of that stuff, no white boys, no nothing. We're not worrying about Arabs, we ain't worrying about the Islamic, we're not worrying about any of those things. Why? Because the father made his promise. We don't have to worry about that. So do what I tell you to do. Do what I tell you to do, and you don't have to worry about that. That's how easy it is, family. That's how simple this is. I want to make that clear. That's how simple this is, family. That's how simple this is. The father said, do what I told you to do and you're going to be fine. Now, I want you to go to the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. Family, watch this. Watch this. Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. And Michael, love that name. Thank you, father. Michael, the great angel. 
And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. Righteousness, righteousness, righteousness. If your name is not in that book, you're screwed. You're done. This is why you got to keep the commandments. This is why I don't give a damn about multiple wives. This is why I don't give a damn about all of these other stupid things that these niggas are arguing about. This is about righteousness. The only way, the only, 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 only way that you're getting into the kingdom is by keeping the commandments. I cannot say that anymore. I cannot and will not say that any damn more. That's what it takes. You have to keep the commandments. If you don't keep the commandments, you're gonna die. I don't know how many other times I gotta say that, man. If you don't keep the commandments, you are going to die. Hopefully, you're listening to me because if you don't teach your children to keep the commandments, they're gonna die too. If you don't teach your family if you don't teach people as you are instructed to do, that's why the father gave you these talents. He gave you all of these different little things that you needed in order to be able to convey his message to his people, our people, the Israelites. And there's so many of you with your mouth still closed thinking that you're getting into the kingdom. Let me go ahead and tell you, you're not. This is why you have to go back and read the parable of the talents. Because Yahweh I made it clear, you have work to do. <laughs> you have work to do. Some of you are not doing anything. You're just coming, showing up every Friday, not contributing to anything that you're supposed to be doing. And you're gonna pay for it too. Oh yeah, you are. Now, stay in the book of Daniel. Go back three chapters. Daniel chapter nine and verse 12. Now everybody should be familiar with this one. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 12, and he that confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judge us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole earth have not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. So now this is why I wanted to read this one. I wanted to connect those two together. The Most High said there's going to be an evil that has never been seen on this earth before. I'm going to say that again. There is going to be an evil. There is going to be an evil that this world has never seen before. So do you know what that means? We've seen the best of what Esau is able to do. That means that they are going to be pulling out the stops. There are going to be things that we haven't seen. Do you know why? Because they are probably going to wind up taking their true forms. This is the part that people don't want to talk about. Our bodies are changing. Why are there? Why will theirs not? <laughs> Revelation 2 9. Who was their father? The devil? They say, I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. We have something that we have to pay attention to. Something that we've never seen before. I need y'all to understand that. An evil like you've never seen before. I am very uncomfortable with that statement. But all I know is this. If you ain't ready, that's your... You already know. I'm trying to be friendly tonight. Now, family, please, let's go to the book of Lamentations, chapter 1 and verse 12. The book of Lamentations, chapter 1 and verse 12. Family, watch this. Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 12. Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by, behold, and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. Now, I brought that out twice. Last week and the week before. Showing you how all of this here connects. All of it. All of it. I'm making sure I don't give you any room to run. You can't. You ain't running from this. I told you. I'm going to die doing this. 
I have no choice. I got to make sure that many of you make it. I need you to understand that. There's a passion behind what I'm doing. This is why I'm so adamant about making sure that every last one of you that said you was going to be at the gathering is going to be there because I know the importance of it. Hopefully, you're beginning to see the importance of it. This is the end. And the Father gave us a specific instruction, gather yourselves together. Why? Because we're going to need it in this time of Jacob's trouble. I'm not sure if y'all realize what's happening on earth right now. Do you know there's a whole war going on overseas? Do you know that? There's an entire war against many countries going on overseas that America is in the middle of. And what are they doing over here? They're telling you about P. Diddy. They're telling you about Cat Williams. They're telling you about comedy. They're telling you about the churches. They're telling you all these things to keep you from putting your eyes where it belongs on the national news watching as prophecy unfolds and some of you niggas are worrying about what other niggas are doing in the entertainment industry who's getting their booty hole blown out by p diddy unbelievable niggas for you though yep sure is now let's go to the book of hosea chapter 1 and verse 11 the book of hosea chapter 1 and verse 11 Watch this, family. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. We all know who that head is. <laughs> Family, do y'all understand why there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble? This earth is terrified. Queen Carly just showed me the other day. Sent me one of the, uh, what do you call it? A link. Sorry. Sent me a link. These niggas are going to light a rocket on Monday. They are lighting a rocket off on Monday. Why? During the eclipse. During the eclipse. They're sending a rocket off. I wonder why. <laughs> Terrified. And some of y'all are still sitting around playing. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't. I don't. But guess what? For many of you, you know, y'all know what y'all gonna do? You're gonna run. And you you have nowhere to run. Every place that you run, when you get tired, you're gonna have to stop. And as soon as you stop, you're gonna have to face what you've been running from. And it's righteousness. I'm telling you. Go to Psalms chapter 25, please. The book of Psalms chapter 25. Go down to verse 22. There's a little, a little passage right there that always sticks out. Watch this. Psalms chapter 25, verse 22. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. It's almost like our ancestors knew that this day was coming too. <laughs> and you know why? Because we are our ancestors and that day is here. And so many people, they still cannot grasp the concept of all of this and what's going down. Still can't do it. You have the hardest time. So many people are just, they're, they're dying inside at the idea that they actually have to get themselves right. And they have to be what the father created them to be. And there's so many people that have a problem with that. But you are an idiot. And you are. Because he made you great. Didn't I tell y'all last week to get your ass out there and be great? How many people were great for seven days? Hmm? I, didn't, I don't say that just to say it. I don't say those things just to say it. I say it because the Bible says that's what you are. Great. 
That's what the Bible says about me. It says I'm great. That's what the Bible says about King Yada. It says he's great. That's what the Bible says about King Gino. It says he's great. That's what the Bible says about King Tony. It says he's great. That's what the Bible says about King Walik. It says he's great. That's what the Bible says about Queen Tanya. It says she's great. That's what the Bible says about Queen Carly. It says she's great. That's what the Bible says about you. It says you're great. Why don't you believe it? Yet, you'll watch the sick throats. Yes, I'm talking about T.D. Jakes and the rest of them faggots. You'll listen to them all day. Them niggas have not one answer for you. They have nothing but BS. The real men of the most high come to y'all and if you fan us off, well, we don't want to hear from you niggas. <laughs> y'all know it's true. All right, so now, everybody should be familiar with this one. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 14. Yes, this is very rudimentary, but sometimes you got to go back to the basics. But there's many of you that forgot about the basics. You forgot what was going to happen, but let me tell everybody. Let's show why they are so afraid and why the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be so small. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So let me stop right there for a second. That is not everybody on the planet. That is the tribe of Judah, who are the Negroes, and Israel, who are the other 11 tribes. We will be going back to Jerusalem to live in our land, and we will be running the world from that command center. New Jerusalem, do you understand that? And the strangers shall be joined with them. You're going to find out why. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. So for every white person out there, for every other person that is not a black, Hispanic or Native American, according to the Bible, you will be going into slavery. You will be in slavery because you guys had us in slavery. We had to deal with our punishment and you have to deal with yours. OK, listen, you guys had no issues when we were getting our backs whipped, when we were being raped and all those things, you had no issues with it. It was fine. You guys even put it in your history books. You did all those, all of these, these, these record keeping events. But now it's our turn. <laughs> it's our turn. And with us, with black people, especially the tribe of Judah, there's just something about us that is, you know, we like to show off. Yes, we do. We like to show off. And <laughs> this is going <laughs> this is going to be something on earth at that time. That y'all are not going to be able to withstand. That's why the father said y'all are only gonna be able to stay around for a thousand years. Y'all can't deal with what we dealt with. Y'all are not stronger than us. That's why when we was reading Genesis 25, 23, it says what? One will be stronger than the other. You can't survive what we have coming for you. Can't. And we're going to have every memory of everything that you've done to every person. Because we will no longer be in this we will have the mind, the power of God. I'm going to say that again because there's so many of you that don't understand. When I say that, there's so many of us that's going to have the power of God. Do y'all understand what's coming? Many of you don't. Let's continue. 
Now, family, I want you to go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, please. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50. Go down to verse 18. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50 and verse 18. Watch this. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I have punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel again to his habitation and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead in those days. And in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for and and there shall be none and the sins of Judah and they shall not be found for I will pardon them whom I reserve. Do you understand family baby? Do you understand what that just said? The father said all the sins and everything that we committed, no more, no more. I'm not even going to remember them. I'm not even going to remember them. Yes, y'all sin, but there are going to be some of you that I am going to save. Those are the ones whose names are written in the book. That's why it is so important what you do right now. That's why I'm trying to tell you, start doing the work so that you can be in the book. Because if your name is not in that book, you are screwed. You're done. You got to do something. You got to do something where you're getting the most highest attention, family. I am trying to tell you this. Good or not, you're finished. Now, jump down. Same chapter 50. Go down to verse 33. Jump down to verse 33, please. Watch this. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Their Redeemer, which is Yahweh Shai, is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. All of these promises are coming to you. All of them. All of them. Oh, they're coming to you. They're coming to me. They're coming to us. But which ones? The ones that are righteous. The ones that are righteous. You see, family, I got to make sure there's a separation. The righteous versus the unrighteous. The righteous versus the unrighteous, family. That's what this is about. It's about keeping the commandments versus sin. Keeping the commandments versus sin. Okay? There is no in between. There is no gray area. It is black and white. Keeping the commandments versus sin what side are you on what side do you fall on i want to go back to the book of lamentations i want you to go to the book of lamentations chapter 2 and verse 13 please the book of lamentations chapter 2 and verse 13 i want to bring something up here watch this what thing shall i take to witness for thee what thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? The father is showing you. He said, there's nobody greater than us. There's nobody. There's no one, no one, no one, no one, no one on this planet. No one. So that's why you should go and look in the mirror as this Broadcast goes off and play. There ain't nobody greater than me. That's what the Bible just said. Now, we all know we're not greater than Yahweh Shai. We all know we're not greater than the Father. But guess what? There ain't nobody greater than you. <laughs> mm hmm. We know that. And there is nothing to be ashamed about in saying that. What did the Father tell us? No reason to be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. The father is telling you this. The father is telling you, you need to have some pride about yourself. Not being prideful, have some pride about yourself. Know who you are. Know who you are because that's what he created you to be. His. <laughs> so many people don't understand that one. They don't get it. They don't want to get it either. Now watch this. Uh, go stay in the book of Lamentations. Go over two chapters. Go down to uh, verse, chapter 4, verse 6. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 6. Watch this. I want to follow something up. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown as in a moment and no hand stayed on her. Y'all see that? Yo, he's comparing this to, the, to Sodom. Now, we all know what happened to Sodom overnight. 
that fast. Destroyed. What happened? This was the foreshadow of what's coming. Them angels came, remember? And you had a bunch of them punks running around wanting to rape the angels. Family? Is that not a problem today? <laughs> We're past that part now. Y'all understand that? The, 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 the sheer disgust of what's on planet Earth right now. This is happening all in the prisons, all over, the, all over. That sky is gonna crack any minute, guys. And if you're not ready, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> all right? For real, I mean, seriously. All right, now let's go to the book of Hosea, chapter 12. The book of Hosea, chapter 12, is going to verse 2. Watch this. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah. Now, family, just talking about us. Come on now. The tribe of Judah. The Negroes. That's us. Top tribe. But there's a reason why. Watch. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah. And will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his doings will he recompense him. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. That's why I wanted to bring that out. You see that? Referencing right back to it. And by his strength he had power with God. I just told y'all that. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel. And there he spake with us. But I brought this out here for a reason. The father showed Judah, the big brother, the top tribe. He starts with us. We catch that ass whooping first. Why? Because we don't listen. Guys, I'm telling you, look all over the planet right now and see who is the reigning champion in sin. It's Judah. It is us. It's us. We got to get right. And that's why I look at the kings and I look at you princes. The men, it is time for you to get your households in order. That is an order coming from me. It is time to get your houses in order. It is time for you to put your bullshit away. You have people that is now time for you to lead. These sisters aren't leading anything. You are. I am. Do you understand me, soldier? Do you understand what I'm telling you? Because now it is time to start holding y'all responsible. We're there. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, I love to play, I love to joke around, I love to be silly, but the one thing that I love doing more than any of those things is being a leader. And I'm going to tell you right now, the leader is much different than the teacher. When it comes to being a leader, there are no games. Because I know who I have to answer to. And I really hope y'all understand that. I truly, truly do. I hope you get it. Because that time is here. It's here. It's no longer a secret, guys. Now, just because it may not be going as fast as you would like for it to go doesn't mean that it is not happening because it is and all the time for talk is over all that's done just to let y'all know as a family that we are talking in regards to plans plans and exit strategies for things that, are, that that's going to happen things that is coming up now those discussions are already being have those discussions already in place let's put it like that and without me talking too much or whatnot about it because all things are not supposed to be discussed until the rightful time but just to know that with this family those discussions are happening and i will be reaching out to many more of you to let you know now because that time is here and i hope and pray that you guys understand that no more games no more games at all. So as the weeks continue, as they keep going, 
These are more of the lessons that we're going to have. Preparation. Because it is that time. So family, this is not a note to leave out on. This is a time to be excited. This is not a note to leave out on upset because this should be the most exciting time that you have ever experienced because you are about to come into your truest form. All you got to do is do what he told you. And now remember, family, there has to be a rendezvous point for a lot of this stuff. Where is that going to take place? The very first of the rendezvous points will be Philadelphia. Friday night, May 10th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, we're going to kick this off an hour earlier. An hour earlier. Yes, indeed, because we want to make sure that everybody is going to be able to see it and watch it. And yes, it is at the Fringe Arts Theater in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And guys, for everyone that got their tickets, I cannot wait to see you there. This is the most exciting time that Earth has ever seen. And our eyes are seeing it. And family, I love y'all. I love you so much. So until next week, family. Guess what? Do what you have to do. The same mission as last week. Get your ass out there and be great. Give the most high all the praise. Give it to him. He deserves it. <laughs>